Matt Reif. The talk of the town, I'm sure you've heard about him. If you haven't, you're definitely about to. He's a stand-up comic based out of Ohio, and he joins Jordan Peterson on his podcast, which I, like many others, did not really expect. It's quite the collaboration, and so many people are talking about Matt's cancellation because of his recent Netflix special, but uh, here we're actually going to dive into the philosophical bits of comedy because they do have a segment about Freud, so let's get into it. Well, that's good, too, because one of the things... So Freud regarded jokes as a route to the unconscious, like a, as, a, as part of the royal road to the unconscious. Ooh. Well, the reason for that is that you don't, you don't get to decide whether you're going to laugh if it's a genuine laugh. Mm -hmm. If someone says something that's funny, you'll laugh even if you're embarrassed about laughing afterwards, yeah. right? So the funniest jokes are actually the ones where you laugh despite yourself. Yeah, of right, course. Right, right, right. Well, Do you laugh at dark jokes too? Don't lie. That shows is that when you tell a good joke, you're striking someone very rapidly and very hard in a part of their being that can't be faked. So there's something dreadfully honest about comedy because you can't, mm -hmm. no one laughs at a joke with a real laugh and you can tell if it's a real laugh yeah. unless the joke is actually funny. And so what that also means is, well, you're telling these jokes and collecting the responses. So you have this domestic violence joke and you might say, well, that's risky, but that's not the right question. The, the right question is, is it actually funny? And another question is, can you rely on the fact that it's funny as an indicator of its moral worth? Mm. And I think you can, right? I think that if you tell a joke to repeated audiences mm -hmm. and you get a good humored laugh out of that, like a genuine laugh, then that's an indication that you've actually struck the target in the right place. And the people who are complaining about that have more faith in their ideological judgment than they do in the spontaneous reaction of a multitude of people. Yes. Right? But it's entirely, what I love about comedy is it's entirely subjective. And the point is that it makes somebody laugh, right? If it does make one person laugh, it is definitively funny just not to the masses, which is totally fine. Obviously, the objective of having a stand-up comedy career is to appeal to as, as many as you possibly can, but your comedic intentions is, is, if I get a laugh, technically, the joke is funny. Mm -hmm. Now, it's up to me to listen and engage the audience to where I go, hmm, do I leave it as is, and I appeal to this one person, which is technically still not wrong, the joke is still funny, or do I do more work on this joke to properly articulate why I think this is funny and why you should laugh at it to try to get everybody else on board. Okay. What do you think? Do you agree with this? This is an interesting topic because if we're going to look at the unconscious, particularly with Freud and then also merging into a, a union perspective, you could say that what you naturally find funny could be a reflection of your shadow self, right? The, the parts of you that kind of sit underneath your conscious and, uh, and, and who you... Uh, the surface portray yourself to be or even just think of yourself to be and uh it's very interesting to even think for yourself why do you find what you find funny but i think going over to matt's point here regarding something is funny if one person laughs at it i mean technically speaking but if we're going to look at comedy as a genre and as a public domain genre of the arts you need to understand that the masses act as like a, a synthesis of what is generally funny it doesn't mean that they're right they're wrong or anything we're not talking about uh, comedy in a moral sense we're just talking about what represents comedy philosophically and then how do we discern what we should then uh, share with the public you know most frequently most often and, and how will it be best absorbed but when you just look at a joke, it's like, yeah, maybe you and your one buddy have this secret joke that only you guys find funny and you guys find that humor in it and it's a bonding experience. And that could be, you know, how your subconsciouses, you know, really communicate with each other, interestingly. But in another facet, there's like this aspect of the public domain serving as this, this synthesis of like, well, this is what's going on in society right now. Art is seen as a reflection of what's going on in society. So we find this funny probably because we agree it coheres with society standards or it's actually a complete reversal of society standards and that's why there are so many people who sometimes feel really guilty about what they laugh at because they they have these moral standards for themselves particularly in a societal sense and how they conduct themselves but they might laugh at a joke that completely counteracts that and it doesn't mean that they're a bad person but it's very telling of of that it's okay sometimes to 
to be on the other side or be on the shadow when comedy is poking fun at something that we see so serious. And I think it allows us to pick holes and play with uh, what we regard as, as so intense, right? And I think that's the notion of comedy. I remember even during the pandemic, uh, not to get too, too much into it, but people had said that they had made absurd comic uh, jokes or, or reactions because they wanted to just bring some levity to people's lives that were in dire need and that were in severe circumstances, right? And and that's a coping mechanism, but I'm, I'm very curious to see where they go here with this. So when you're, when you're screening jokes for mm -hmm. continued inclusion, you could imagine a joke that Imagine, it's just like this with pieces of music. There'll be pieces of music. Sorry, I just I was thinking, can you imagine Jordan as a stand-up comic, comic? Sorry, what do you think his jokes would be about? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just so interested to see him that way because he's a great speaker. And uh, I'm, I'm curious if he has that, that muscle for, for comedy and, and what he would even bring up, my goodness. That are very, very popular, that spread very rapidly, but that have no legs, mm -hmm. right? They're the sort of earworm that you listen to once or twice. TikTok it's catchy. Trends. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When when you're selecting when you're selecting jokes, I'm wondering what are your criteria can't just be that it makes the most people laugh. Like I could imagine there are jokes that have a delayed response and the faster people in the audience catch it. Like Absolutely. Can, okay, so can you can you can you tell how do you determine which jokes you keep? There we go. It's process. Like, what well, kind of response are you looking for? The most amount of laughter is the best possible right, right. outcome. However, and I don't know how I don't know how to break this down psychologically, but there's something about comedians that like and yeah, right. Response, right, he right. He said right. the thing That's you're an not thing. supposed to say yeah, yeah, right on yeah, the yeah. line. It is right? funny, not mm. laugh out loud funny, but. Oh my God, he, he right, said it right. funny. Now, well, the something interesting about that, again, not dabbling into the right or wrong morality aspects, but when you do make jokes that are right at the line, I think it's like, it's a subtle way of communicating to everyone or trying to observe if everyone is on the same page as you. Because we all have those intrusive thoughts that, oh my goodness, you never want that to be speak out. But everyone has those thoughts at times. So it's like when someone pushes a joke to the line, it's almost like that subtlety rises to the surface and everyone tries to see if they're in the same dance together. So I, I think that is a, an interesting component of when you get that type of reaction, when whether you're on the stage or whether you're just in the audience, right? That's something that to gauge um, the, the, the level of, of synchronicity, if you may. Shock sort of value. a, well, that's, yeah, that that's separate from shock value though, like you're pointing out. It's like, I can't believe he had the gall to say that. Mm. That's like the gesture in the king's court, fundamentally, mm. right? Is that you've brought to light something that everyone knows or suspects yes. and pointed to it. Mm. Right, right. And that is funny that you get an, an O response like that. But outrage would be so personal, too, because that that joke about domestic violence, you saw, if, if you saw the joke uh, for the, I don't know if you saw the whole special or the clip of it, but you saw a laughter reaction, mm -hmm. right? Oh, yeah. Nobody it was clearly in that, that audience, people thought that was funny. Yes, nobody in the audience had a problem whatsoever. If no. you watch later in the special, I do a school shooting joke that gets a massive ooh mm. response. Mm. Ooh. And you didn't get canceled for that. Nobody's talking about that. Damn. People only care about the things that offend them specifically. They don't care about me hurting somebody else's feelings potentially. It's very selfish. But how do you know if the audience in that moment is a reflection of society as a whole or that particular demographic, right? And, that, and that's what's so hard to gauge. And I think this is the, the crux and, and the intersection that Matt's facing right now is because he has this audience that he had derived from TikTok, a lot of them might not have been comedy fans prior, so they are still understanding and learning the language of comedy. So when he says something completely offside, I think this was even one of his arguments, which is like, or someone else actually talking about him uh, on his behalf, saying that, look, the audience has to catch up to comedy and who he is because he typically doesn't have a comedic audience, right? So there's some fascinating footing to work around here. It's not very clear where to draw the lines. And I think that's where everyone is so quick to try to make a decision as to who he is, what he is, because it's it's so concerning to be like, okay, he made this joke. It was offside. Uh, how far is too offside? Does it even fit within the realm of comedy? How far should comedy extend from the real world and how absurd should it be? And I think these are all questions that people are internally trying to ask themselves while pointing the finger at him. Entirely selfish. 
you're going to let me make fun of other things and make jokes and make light of certain other dark topics. But the thing that affects you personally mm -hmm. is the only thing you're upset about. It's very sad. Yeah, yeah, you, well, you got to yeah, ask He's not having it. I, the people that I saw complaining about you, I mm -hmm. saw absolutely no evidence in the way they were talking about your joke that they actually were hurt or offended. I, yeah. Whatever they said was, and I've seen this about people complaining on, on Twitter in particular or in public, they almost always claim offense on the behalf of hypothetical other people yeah. who somehow they're acting as allies for or spokespeople for, which is a little bit on the condescending side to begin with, if you ask me. It's like if they're offended, yeah. you know, if, if a group of women against domestic abuse had conjured up a petition against you, you know, and it was composed of 100,000 sufferers, well, that might be more evidence than some dim-witted mm. TikToker who of decided course. that they were going to be the spokespeople for these hypothetically offended victims. Now they're starting to lean into more of the virtu virtue signaling argument, which is fair. Uh, I can see how that would be a clear segue. So there's a unique intimacy about comedy, but at the same token, there's also this objectivity to it because we all laugh. We smile, we laugh. It's something that makes us so human at the end of the day. And the ability to poke holes at, at the structures, the apparatuses that be, are what allow us to trivialize how much power they have over us. And I know Jordan has actually made this point before. It's like, what's the antithesis of power? It's play. So when you're laughing, you, you're you completely released of any tension. You're completely released of, of letting the powers to be take over your spirit, let's say, if you want to get more into a spiritual uh, thought process. But in a literal and technical way, comedy does allow us to become even more objective about a situation because it does take us out of those boundaries and poke fun at what does exist. So possibly we could change it and reform it and um, be able to have a good laugh while we're at it. It doesn't always have to be that serious. So what are some questions in comedy and philosophy that you have yet to see explored? And I think it's going to be an ever evolving topic, especially when we see more personalities such as Matt Reif come to the stage, literally and figuratively. Uh, but I think comedy is inherently philosophical because philosophy is about asking more questions and looking Looking at life from a new vantage point, which is precisely what comedy tries to do by breaking, tearing, bending, and twisting the, the systems and structures and constructs that we see in place right now, being that everyone else is also willing to play the game, right? So again, the lines are blurred and the lines do change over time. It is also time-oriented as well. And uh, I'm, I'm very curious to see how comedy evolves. I'm a fan of comedy. Love Andrew Schultz, Tom Segura, Sebastian Maniscalco. Those are some killers in comedy. So what are your thoughts on all of this? Do you think that Matt's philosophical? Is he insightful? Is he deep? Maybe he is. Maybe there's a lot more to his comedy than we have thought so far, but uh, we'll see you on the next one. Please like and subscribe. It helps so much more than you know, and we'll be talking soon. Thank you so much.